Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King as we come to you from the locker room once again this week. We're going to be joined by the assistant coach of Islanders women's soccer, Lauren Molinaro. We'll also be joined by the head coach of Islanders volleyball, Tony Greystone. And we'll also see a very interesting report on, well, this facility, the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium. As we get things started, though, we are joined by Lauren Molinaro, assistant coach for Islanders soccer. How are you? I'm great. How are you today? Doing really well. I know you're having a good weekend coming off of a excellent weekend so everybody's uh, pretty happy right now absolutely mm -hmm. well you're in your first year as a coach here at texas AM university of corpus christi under head coach shanna caldwell but this isn't your first go around together you guys know each other you've known each other a long time kind of give us a, the the history between you two we have a very long history we've been friends for about 20 years um and uh, we started playing together when we were 13 years old uh playing against each other and with each other around that time period. And then we both went to college. She went to UNC to begin with, uh, and I went to UConn. And our very freshman year, uh, we played in the national championship game against each other. <clears throat> UNC ended up winning. So, um, <laughs> so she beat me in the national championship. And then uh, a year later, um, she was looking to transfer. Um, and so uh, since we were such good friends, I, uh, I'd like to think that I persuaded her to transfer to UConn. So then we ended up finishing our career playing together uh, as teammates. And we always sort of uh, talked about, you know, that dream talk of one day, one day we'll run a program together. And uh, it's amazing because two years ago she gave me a phone call and said, hey, remember that thing we used to talk about? Um, well, I think, I, I think it can come true. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a cool story there. Well, moving to the action on the field. Let's okay. talk about let's talk about the kids. Uh, first off, congratulations to you, Coach Caldwell, your staff, the kids. Great win this past week. The 1-0 victory overtime win over McNeese State right here at home of the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium. Um, we can talk about the winning goal, which came in overtime. But truthfully, I think the defensive effort and the goalkeeping probably was the stars of this game. Talk about it. Yeah, uh, and you know what, that's awesome to hear, um, you know, you noticing that and people in the in the crowd noticing that, people at home noticing that because um, when Shanna and Samantha and I uh, talked about what we wanted to do preseason, um, it was focused on the defense. Get organized, work together, um, and, and that has been our focus since day one. So to hear, you know, you, you notice that and people, like I said, uh, pe pe other people notice that is great because we focused on shifting, sliding, um, tidying up, being very disciplined defensively. Um, and, and I think it's sh that discipline, the kids really have bought into that and worked on it. And I think that that has been our, our star lately. Plus Baldwin in the net is unbelievable. She is, she's a leader off the field. She's a leader on the field. She inspires everybody around her and um, she's been playing out of her mind lately. So um, I would have to agree with that um, for that, sure. That would, the emphasis goes there. Now the goal itself though, we do need to talk about the goal because you don't win without it, plain and simple. It came in overtime, and it didn't come from Yvette Franco, which most goals have come from her, but she was definitely involved. I understand now, going on the side of the field there were, where your benches were, you had an excellent angle on the development of the play. Sure. Tell us what you saw. Uh, well, it, first of all, I was, really ha I was really, really happy to see Miller get the goal. She's been working super hard. She's been playing very well lately. She's wanted it. She's talked about it. Um, and she hasn't really been able to kind of turn that corner and capitalize as much, I know, as she's wanted to. So that was awesome. Now, um, Lisa Miller we're talking about here. Yes, yeah. Elisa Miller. Um, and so uh, Yvette got the ball in, in the center of the field and does. she did what, what she does best. She went at the player. She drew... She drew the defender perfectly. She dribbled at her front foot, went at her, kind of sucked her in. And Elisa does a really nice job of sort of bending out. So, so as Yvette's drawing this defender, Elisa kind of pulled out here and created a lot of space. Yvette kind of looked like she was going to go to goal, sliced it through, and, and Miller took an excellent first touch right at the goal, right at the goalkeeper to draw her in and was able to, to knock it by her. So um, it was it was unbelievable, but I, I was very happy to see Elisa get the goal. Um, and Yvette, certainly, if she's not scoring, she's involved somehow with it. The celebration? <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, not only, it, you see everybody cheer, everybody run on the field, a huge pile, and then to see, you know, our women's basketball team be so supportive and kind of run on the field as well and, and, and support us was, that was, it was unbelievable, yeah. It was a moment, there's no doubt. There was yeah. definitely a moment. Now, considering, once again, this is a first-year program. Yes. It's a first-year program and an initial recruiting class. The, we're doing everything for the very first time. Was this team theoretically supposed to be this competitive? 
Uh, I would say uh, I, I would say the short answer is is no. I don't think anybody really thought they would be this competitive. Um, in fact, what's been extremely rewarding and awesome to hear is after most games we've played, uh, um, the other team's coach has come up and said, "Wow." you guys, uh, you do not look like a first year program. Um, and I think the word on the street, um, the scouting reports have said, you know, um, watch out, they're, they're not a typical first year program. And so for, you know, for us to hear as coaches, um, that's an incredible thing because, you know, we have had our expectations very high. Um, you know, we don't treat them like a first year program. And I think maybe that has a little bit to do with uh, uh, why they're so competitive. We don't treat them as a first year program and they don't think they're a first year program. And so we go into every game believing we can win. We go into every game leaving everything on the field. Um, and so I think that has, uh, has had a little bit to do with it, but it's been, it's been incredible hearing that from other coaches. Well, with the taste of a Southland Conference victory, your first one, which was outstanding, yeah. what do you expect to be the reaction of the team as they prepare for the next game, the next home match against the University of Incarnate Word? And then, of course, following that, you've got four on the road. Right. Um, I think that, you know, we talked a lot about, hey, we're right there. We lost our first uh, four games by one goal, and we fought we fought hard in each of those games, um, you know, and we talked to them about, you've got to keep believing, you've got to keep believing, um, you're going to turn the corner, success is right around the corner, but you have to believe, um, and they kept believing, and we got our first win, so I think that, you know, going into this next game, you know, we, uh, we believe a little bit more that we are going to win um, and that we can win and that we have turned that corner. So I think it's going to be excitement, um, but also, you know, as coaches, we prepare them um, by, by saying like, okay, hey, you had one victory. That's great. You know, revel in that, love that, but, but now you have a new battle. Well, you're constantly either on the road, you know, recruiting or on the phone recruiting and doing mm -hmm. whatever you can. What's the buzz out there on the Islanders program? Are, are people taking notice? Uh, it, it, yes, uh, this is one thing that's great. When we first started, it was kind of, wait, you're who? Wait, they have a program? Wait, what? I've never even heard of that. Um, and and now, um, you know, we are getting more emails. We are getting more phone calls. So that's really nice recruiting-wise. Um, and uh, when we actually seek out recruits, they've heard of us. Um, and so uh, that's kind of neat. So um, not only through, you know, um, our success on the field, um, and just, you know, um, uh, gen in general, the word kind of getting out that we exist, um, that we're fighting hard, um, I, think, I think it is out there and I think people are very excited for it. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, the support we've received at home here. Our first game having, you know, 12, almost 1,200 people um, in attendance, I think, you know, um, says a lot about the support in the community. And so I think the word's definitely getting out there. Definitely so. Yeah. Lauren Money Molinero joining <laughs> us here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Stephen. I appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to get a report on this beautiful facility we're at today, the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadiums. More to come right here on Islanders Insider. It's that time of year again when all the conditioning and all the hard work pays off. It's time for the State Farm Southland Conference Mascot Challenge. Izzy's been putting in long hours getting ready, and he needs your help. Vote online via the Southland Conference Facebook page or by visiting tinyurl.com slash mascot1314. The winning program gets $5,000. So vote every day. Go Islanders! Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we want to check in with Islanders correspondent Trey Seal as he tells us a little bit more about this environment, the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium. This fall marked the opening of the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium. It didn't just meet expectations, but exceeded them. So when I saw the plans for the present track, uh, I said, wow, this is going to be really great if they actually build what they got on plans, and they actually built what they have on plans. And so it is a, it's a uh, site of beauty. In other words, it, it far exceeds anything I thought we were going to get. So I, I was uh, hugely surprised and very pleasantly surprised. It, it met my expectations. I wasn't expecting too much. It's really nice facilities. Uh, I was really impressed with uh, the locker rooms and the training room. Uh, I think it's really neat that um, it kind of brings the team together. I think I was really excited the first time that we got to see the plans. Um, the renderings came in and uh, we were very excited. We got them blown up and we could show recruits. 
Um, and that was a huge selling point, but actually physically being able to stand out on the field um, and take recruits through the building and, and take our team through the building when they showed up on campus. Uh, it was just kind of a sense you could see some of their jaws drop and um, just the fact that it was theirs. They had ownership of it and, and they felt like you know they were um, ambassadors to help uh, help the soccer get off the ground and that this was what they were given to work with and you know I think they're very grateful. Uh, I know I'm very grateful. Both soccer and track and field take great pride in the ownership of the new stadium as a place for them to call home. Uh, over there at the high school like <laughs> you, we have to ask I guess ask permission for a lot of stuff so a lot of it's locked up and we don't get the the benefit of having our own things there all the time. So now we have our own hurdles. We can do whatever we want. It really, it, I don't know, it really helps out quite a bit. It was, it was really awesome to see the hurdles with the Islander logo on it. This is definitely one of the nicer stadiums I've played in. Most stadiums we go to are just like the grass fields with the little, um, just the small bleachers on the side. They don't get like the full surrounding of it. Our staff's very grateful to have the facilities that we do. Um, I think they're top notch. They really, um, I think, are the best in our conference. And uh, you know, all the teams that have come through have, have said as much um, to that effect. So I, I think that's kind of, you know, you have a little sense of pride, and uh, so we're very, very happy with um, the end product. The hope was that the stadium would provide a home field advantage for the teams, and the local community support has done just that. Just because we're so used to our crowds and then with the side winds that come off the coast and just being able to practice on that field and knowing the way it works when we get into games, I think a lot of teams aren't used to the dry heat and the heat we have here and so just our stadium is a definite advantage against other teams. Yeah, you know, for the last, what, eight or nine years we've never had a home track meet. So now we're going to have some. So yeah, it, it, it's going to help. It's, it's, it's a win-win all the way around. I think it's going to be the coolest thing ever to have, you know, my friends and uh, other athletes out there coming to cheer us on and, you know, watch us compete in what we do and to see us succeed because I think we're going to do really great this year. For Islanders Insider, I'm Trey Seal. We'll be right back. What's Massage Envy Spa? For me, it's healthy. It's affordable. <sighs> I mean, he always wants... Pain relief. Right and I want a healthier complexion. And now we can get a customized massage or a healthy skin facial. At a really good price. At a great price. <laughs> and nothing feels better than that. Customized massages and healthy skin facials, all at the perfect price. Start a healthy routine today with Massage Envy Spa. Go, you'll see. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. As at this time, we're joined by the head coach of Islanders Volleyball, Tony Greystone. Coach. Hey, good to be back. Good to be back. Good to have you back. Uh, good weekend. You know, a couple wins. Never hurt. Actually, since the last time we spoke, you've had four matches, actually. Right. Three wins uh, out of four games and the lone loss coming at Sam Houston State. And, and not to focus on the negative here, but uh, that game was very interesting. There was a pivotal moment in that game where it could have gone either way, but unfortunately, it just didn't fall your way. We knew they were going to be tough, but tell us about that matchup. Well, you know, we didn't play our best for sure. It's the end of a five-week road swing, and, and it, it really caught up with us. But we were, um, you know, we were in the second set. We, we didn't play well the first set at all. Got into the second set. We were up 23-20, and, uh, and then just the wheels fell off for those five points. And... You know, if you've ever been to Sam to play in their gym uh, in a volleyball match, they, they, they know how to do it right. And um, they got on a run and, and just didn't let it go, and, and then we weren't able to, to get it back. But, uh, you know, good, good follow-up win at Lamar on Saturday and then two this last week. So we feel like we're uh, way past that now. Yeah, and the wins, like you said, Lamar, they pushed you guys hard, though. Lamar mm -hmm. uh, played really well, according to what I, all reports that I've read, uh, pushed you to five sets. But, you know, that that's kind of one of those character wins when you're in a tough environment, team's playing very, very well. You're coming off of a tough loss, but you find a way in the fifth set. For sure. And that was, um, you know, the first set was 30-28, and we dropped that one, fought back, win the second one 26-24. And, you know, we felt like we were happy to be tied going to intermission, but we knew we could have been up 2-0 pretty easy. And um, third set was ours, fourth set, they, they just decided to just go out and be as aggressive as they could, and they got a win, and then the fifth set was, you know, a nail-biter, but uh, really proud of the effort. 
Well, it was good to get the split on the road. Anytime you can get the split against good competition yeah. is normally a good thing. You want both wins, but especially when you're playing some of the tops in the division, if you can get a split, the road is the road. Is the road. It's For sure. I mean, big picture, you know, if you go 500 on the road and take care of your home matches, then you're, you're happy with that every time. You got home and you did take care of the home matches. You had the four set match wins over the University of Incarnate Word and Abilene Christian. Now, the wins, first and foremost, the, that's the most important deal, but... Again, talk about the team's performance. I know that those the sets that were dropped, I know as a coach, you're a little frustrated. You want to take care of business. You don't want little opportunities to slip by. Well, we do. We want to get them every time. And, and during the course of the match, you get a feel for whether or not that you're better than them or if you got the matchups in your favor. And, um, and, and so I was disappointed that we dropped a set at, at Thursday night against Incarnate Word. But uh, again, you take a step back. In the middle of it, you're, you're not happy about it at all. You take a step back and you look at it. And you say, well, they had to win 14 out of 16 points to steal a game from us. Okay, they did it. You know? mm-hmm. And then we can bounce back and we win the four set, no problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alvin Christian wins the same thing. Uh, we win the first two. Uh, they take the third set and we bounce back and knock them down 25-10 in the four set. And then at the, at the end of the match, you look at it and you think, you know, for the four sets, Abilene had 35 kills, which is not a lot. But in that one set that they won, they had 18 kills. You know, so mm-hmm. they had one great set, and and were able to put it together and and get a big win from us. I think there were some concerns in the past where all of a sudden something the tide were to turn in such a way that you would be concerned mentally how yeah. your team would respond to yeah. that. But in both of those, they responded exceptionally well. In, in set for sure, and, and really, I think the biggest problem is not so much that who we're playing or what they did to us in that one set or during those those runs. It was just. Uh, you know, we didn't handle the stress very well. I think we we're we're we have this idea in our head what we think we should be, and when that starts to slip away, we're not able to just drop it and focus on the other team and just say, okay, it's not perfect, but we can still get the win. And and so we're beating ourselves up and losing points at the same time, and then we get a chance to start completely over and we're fine. But uh, we got to do a better job in the middle of that run just to be able to take a breath and say, okay, just just go from here. Well, let's break down the team a little bit. Now you have a number of weapons in your arsenal. You got you got some players that that are quite effective and dangerous out there on the court. But who has been your most consistent force out on the court? Who is the one player you go to when you need a side out? Well, probably Ivy or Bree. Now Ivy gets the most balls, but that's because she plays all the way around and she gets a lot of sets out of the back row when we get in trouble or out mm-hmm. of system. Um, and so the, those two are, you know, Ivy's leading the team in kills. Bree's probably our most effective hitter. Um, so I'd be good with either one of those. Either one of those. And that, that uh, ability, like you said, for Ivy, either working the outside or she's one of the more effective I've seen out of the back row yeah. in this league period. Of all the no question. I think she's the most complete player in the conference period. Um, the only player that gets, she, you know, is as good in the back row as she is in the front row. She's over three kills a set and over three digs a set. Nobody does that. And uh, best pass, passer we've got in serve receive, our most effective server. Um, she, she's having a great year. Speaking of serving, the service game in volleyball, do you attempt service placement for aces or is it just something that occurs? I mean, t- tell me about how that happens because, uh, I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough sport to try and all of a sudden find just little holes mm-hmm. in the defense. I mean, well, it's, it's just more your philosophy in general. My, my coaching philosophy is to be more strategic, put the ball in a certain place, try to eliminate a certain player eliminate how many options they have, and then our defense will have an advantage. Um, I've got an assistant coach, Kim Maroon, who's just the opposite. She wants to gun it and serve bombs every time and go for the ace. And if you take a lot of air, she's okay with that. I, I'm, I'm not at that point yet. And so I'm, I'm a little more conservative with what we do, and it shows with our serving numbers. We don't have a ton of aces this year. But, um, you know, aces are hard to get, and so I feel like they just kind of happen. But... Um, so for about half of our servers, we're calling their zone. The other half, they're, they're pretty high risk, and we just kind of let them do their thing. So someone like Megan Olivares, I, I don't tell her what zone to hit. She's just trying to serve it tough and, and do her thing. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you a little bit more about the personnel here. In particular, how has the uh, progress you've seen in the development of your freshmen? Uh, pretty, pretty good for the most part. I'm, I've been really happy with uh, Shaquin. She's the one who's gotten the most playing time of our freshmen offensively she's getting better every week we're adding parts to her game on the offensive end defensively i think she's starting to figure things out she's seeing angles better and she's able to anticipate where the block needs to be set up she just has to be stronger physically at the net balls get through her hands when she's right there and and she just has to be stronger when she goes up the block she's got to lock those elbows out and and she's got to have a little more intent behind it but for the most part i've been really pleased with her 
for sure. Uh, Morgan Carlson has been another one who's had a really nice year but hasn't played at all, and so nobody really sees it. But, um, you know, that's going to change here in the next couple weeks. We're going to really make an effort to get her on the court and see what she can do. Now, when it comes to playing at home, like this past weekend, you had the two two matches at home. You've had some great crowds at the Duga. Mm-hmm. There's there's no doubt the Duga Wellness Center, the the home environment for Islanders volleyball. And so far, I believe last time I had looked, leading the Southland Conference in attendance, mm-hmm. outstanding. Yeah. What is the impact of a big, vocal, energized crowd on a home team and also on the visiting team? Well, on the visiting team, it just makes it harder to communicate. That's the biggest thing. It's you know, you, you hate to think that our crowd is going to really get in their head and, and affect them. You know, it's, it, I, I don't see it that often. It doesn't happen to that, us that often. It's just harder to hear each other. It's hard to communicate. The game gets a little bit faster when you feel that, that noise and that, that loudness in, in the gym. Um, but I think more than anything, it just gives us our, our comfort zone and, and lets us know that even when we're struggling, we still got a crowd behind us. And as soon as we get into a long rally, you can feel with every touch the crowd getting into it. And if you win a long rally at home, you really know that that's where you're at. Well, you're off to your best conference start. Yeah. No doubt. Five and one. But you'll be challenged uh, with a three-game conference road trip to come. I mean, in three in a row. You're mm-hmm. going to stay on the road for three straight. Is this where that grueling six-game and eight days experience is going to pay off? I hope so. I, I think it will. You know, this is um, no road trip that's this long is easy. Um, but I think we're as prepared for it as we can be. So uh, I think the team is actually looking forward to it and knowing that they only have two more road trips left. And um, so we're, we're, we're going to meet ahead on. Again, congratulations. Great run so far, but a lot to go. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks. Tony Greystone, head coach of Islanders Volleyball, joining us. When we come back, we'll recap what's next for Islanders Athletics. Stay with us. More Islanders Insider in a moment. It's a pivotal year in Islanders basketball. Our teams have spent the summer training, preparing, and working on the foundation for the coming year. We are going to play with intensity, determination, and passion. We're ready to make a statement in the Southland Conference. Join us on our journey to the tournament. Islanders basketball season tickets are on sale now. Visit GoIslanders.com or call 825-BALL to purchase your tickets today. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. Let's now look ahead to what's next for Islanders Athletics. Islanders Volleyball will head on a three-game road trip as they'll take off to New Orleans, Louisiana to take on UNO on Thursday, October 10th, 7 p.m. start time. Then they'll head to southeastern Louisiana for a Saturday contest, October 12th at 2 p.m., and they'll round things out in the state of Louisiana as they head to Nichols for a Monday contest, October 14th at 6.30. Islanders Volleyball will head back home then for a pair of big games, including Stephen F. Austin on October 17th at 7 o'clock. That is our Dig Pink event. Look forward to seeing everyone there. Then they'll follow that up against Northwestern State on Saturday, October 19th with a 1 p.m. start time. Honors Women's Soccer are back home again at the Dugan Stadium on Friday, October 11th, as they take on the University of the Incarnate Word at 3.30. Then they'll head for two games on the road, Sunday, October 13th at Lamar at 1 o'clock, then Friday, October 18th at Abilene Christian, a 4 o'clock start time. And Islander Cross Country heads to San Antonio on Saturday, October 12th for the University of the Incarnate Word Cardinal Invitational. Then they'll head off to the NCAA Pre-Nationals on Saturday, October 19th in Terre Haute, Indiana. Once again, we appreciate you tuning in to Islanders Insider once again this week. We want to thank Lauren Molinero from Islanders Women's Soccer and head coach Tony Greystone of Islanders Volleyball for joining us once again in the locker room. I'm Stephen King for everyone involved. We appreciate you tuning in. This has been Islanders Insider.